Hi, Tina. It's me, Joyce. I'm right here. I'm not going to move uh, the camera because I just got it set up, but hi. I'm right here. Here I am. Um, let's see. What I'm going to do is uh, I sent you a copy of, you know, the handout of um, your image. And I did a little, um, you know, I took some colored pencils and I indicated some of the areas that you can darken. And I'm going to show you a demo on how you can darken it and um, and punch it up a little bit more and use all those darks that you say you like to use. Okay, so here we go. First of all, I'm going to show you my palette. And this is a little difficult too because I have to tilt it. But I have permanent alizarin crimson right here. Really, really dark, right? And I have uh, some blue. I added some of the um, Windsor, uh, Windsor blue red shade, or you could put some phthalo blue in there to get that deep dark red. Um, I know, I know, I've been asking you to use the Windsor green blue shade. Um, you could do that also, but I thought you know it, you could mix it up if you like. So what I want you to do is um, find some really rich deep dark reds that you can use and um, start applying it in certain areas. Now, on, your, on the um, image that I sent you, I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple areas right in here, here, and over here, how to punch up your reds, okay? And then we're gonna discuss this in a little bit on how to glaze in a shadow. So this piece here is, um, is a piece that I painted um, for the video, and it's one of the steps. Um, so I thought it was a good um, place to start because it's pretty much at the same stage, except for ignore the background and ignore the white flowers because we're going to do a different background than what I have on here. Alrighty, so we're going to get busy, and I'm going to show you this. I wanted to hurry up and get this to you before the end of the day. And um, I know it's Saturday night. You may not even be thinking about painting. I don't know. Um, and tomorrow, tomorrow, what I'm going to do is actually, I want to, um, I'm going to uh, post another video on, um, on more detailing. A lot of things that was skipped in the editing um, of the, the episodes that you were watching. Now I have a little flat square. It's a, well, it's a flat one qu a quarter inch. And I like using the quarter inch um, for some of these detail uh, things. Now, where I indicated on, there's certain areas, like there's an area here that matches, the values match, and they, they look too similar. So you can take a little bit of a glaze and go ahead and knock this in and then what's going to happen is this is going to allow this petal to pop okay and then you can come down here and bring some of that color in here and i'm going to paint around the little stamens i think that's what these pistols are stamens i forget whatever they were called but um i know we uh, talked about it a lot during the episode so do you see that? Do you see how I can get that to punch up a little bit more? And um, don't feel like you have to use the same mixture of paint all the way around. We can mix that up. And I'm going to show you some of the colors. I, here's my permanent rose. I could take a little um, transparent yellow, little permanent rose. And, I, and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to have a little bit of an orange here have a little bit of permanent rose there okay so I like to have a variety of color mixed in my palette as I'm painting now I'm gonna go ahead and if you're comfortable with the round brush I want you to use the round brush if you're comfortable with the flat you know you can use the flat you could try you can go back and forth and try both it doesn't mean you know you're just stuck with one or the other you know I like switching back and forth sometimes it just depends on the angle of my arm or you know um, the stroke I'm looking for um, but this seems to be a little bit easier for me because I'm painting off the side now okay do you see that and I'm starting to add 
a little bit of red around the stamens so they can start popping forward. Now, once I've done that, once I've added this color right here, you can take a wet brush and pull it up a little bit, you know, because it doesn't have to be exactly the same value in between all these little uh, stamens. Uh, so yeah, you can you can switch it up because they kind of have a little bit of a yellow pink variation um, in the photo. I don't know if you guys get these poppies back in North Carolina, but um, California sure does have an abundance of them at a certain time of year, and uh, they come and then they go. Uh, they're they're such a delicate little flower. I think the wind hits them and then they're gone. So um, when they're out and in bloom, I like getting my camera and running around taking um, a lot of the photos. Okay, so, and they're usually seen in <laughs> parking or uh, shopping malls and in planter boxes and so I guess since it's an annual. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to keep bringing this up and you can start, you know, doing a negative um, painting around the stamen. So if you want to keep some of that yellow there, you just paint around it, around it like so. And you see, I laid some water down too, and you can just drop in some pinks or what have you right there. Don't feel like you have to detail each one out because eventually they're all going to start popping for you. And, um, you know, just keep going back and forth. And, and there's a variety of values that happen within these stamens, okay? Fun, like it. Um, yeah, there it goes. Like you can drop water in and do a little wet into wet. There's all kinds of approaches. It doesn't have to be just exactly the same way all the way around. I, I find that the, the variety of brush strokes, the variety of color, the variety of values that you use, it makes it more, um, you know, it just gives it more of a, of a flavor of, of um, Mother Nature because I, I know if you were to see these flowers in person, you could tell that they're not all the same size and or color. Okay. Okay, so that, that is something I, I, I want to see you do all the way around. Now I'm going to address the center part right here. And that can be, you can do, you can use whatever, you know, combination you like. I'm, I'm using a little bit of a green and a little bit, no, more green than red. So it's, it's almost like black, but you can have a little bit of the green popping through if you want. I wonder if that comes through on that camera. Um, or add a little more yellow, you know, whatever you want to do. But what we're looking for is now, remember we did this, it was a wet into wet. And um, I can see that you did do that. And, um, but however, if you want, you could try this too, because I'm looking at yours and I'm thinking maybe if you had a little bit more pop in there, this, we're gonna give this area a little bit more detail and pop, okay? So here's one of the things that you can do. You could take some clear water and just lay that back in there. Okay, right like so, and just pull some of that water out, right like so, okay, and then I'm going to take, oops, shoot, I just stuck my paintbrush right in the green pile. Okay, so um, now combination, look, and you can still go back in, it, it's not, it's not, um, you know, you don't, you, it's not like you just get one shot at this. You can re-wet it and actually drop this in. And you can exaggerate all you want, you know. You don't have to do it exactly the way you see it on the video. You can give it your own little flair because I, I just think this is, this is really fun right here. Okay, right like so. And no, I did not see your cat's paw prints on your, on the image that you sent me, so. Um, there you go, right like so. Okay, so I exaggerated that a little bit more. Now, um, another thing you can do to give that, that center a little pop is you could take a deeper, darker yellow than what we used here. Okay, I added a little red to it, or you can add a little, yeah, I added a little red to the yellow. And then you can just kind of glaze in these areas right here, 
just like so. Detail that out. I don't know if you like the detail uh, work in painting. Some people don't care for it. Um, I like it, you know. I, I think it's fun. It, I, it gives me a sense of satisfaction that that I've gotten in there and, and kind of gave it a more of a 3D type look. It's, you know, these, these little areas sometimes are a challenge. Okay, let's see. So, so try that out and, um, you know, you can take it as far as you like because I think what, what will happen is once you begin, um, once you begin glazing in, here, go back over here. Once you begin glazing in some of these areas, you're going to get really excited. Now, I really like what you did here with the shadow. That looks good. I wouldn't touch that. But you can paint right up and around here in this area and kind of give this a little bit more of a pop. And then, you know, you might even want to uh, maybe you know, bring that shadow a little bit more. The shadow's funny because sometimes if you're, you're, I know I was afraid to paint the shadow one because it looked like um, it was just more, more, more of the stamens. But what you can do is take a watered down version like you did also, and you can come in and just kind of lay this in and kind of test it out and see how dark you can go with this, you know, if it really does pop or not. Because sometimes it's, it's, it's not dark enough because when you stand back, it, it just kind of it becomes washed away and it doesn't have a real pop to it. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm all about. I love having that dramatic darks, you know, that really punches everything up. Um, because when you stand, you know, when your painting's hanging in, in a competition or in a show or at a gallery, you want people to stop and go, what? Even if they're not totally in love with it, they stop long enough just to kind of take a second look, you know? Okay, so <clears throat> one more thing I'm going to show you on this, this guy. Up in this corner, I'm just going to show you a few more, um, a few more uh, folds, darking, uh, getting those darker folds. Okay, and I'm still taking that deep burgundy color. And you don't even have to, now that you've got your, your um, first pass in, and I love, I love these pinks that you have in here. I'd keep those. But you can come in here and just get a few more values, darker values. And that doesn't mean they, all of the movement has to be this dark. But you can start here just by adding a little bit more. And it just always amazes me, even when I painted something and then I'll demo it back over it, like this piece, and I go, oh wow, I could have taken it even further. But sometimes you just can't see it right at the beginning because you're, you know, you are, you are being very careful about how dark everything's getting. But um, then once it gets really nice and dry, and sometimes if it sits for a day, you start playing with it and you go, oh my gosh, it's, it's not, it's reacting a little bit better than it did on two days ago or, you know, it's, and sometimes it just takes that long for the, for the paint and the paper just to dry and rest. As Guy says, my friend Guy, he says it has to rest. And it's true, you know, it's, it's nice when it's really, it hasn't been touched for a while. Like this piece, I can go back in and play with this a whole lot. Okay? Um, also, don't be afraid to try those mid-tones. Okay, the mid-tones, and I mean, you know, add some water to your pinks or your blues or whatever, and find more areas that you can add just one more value. You know, that that increases the folds also. It gives it a little bit more of a punch. So I'm not just talking the darkest darks. I'm talking dark to mid-tones, okay? Find places that you can drop that in. Okay, so that's that for this piece right here. And um, actually, look at my, my area here compared to your area here. You really, you really did a nice job here. This looks great. I wouldn't touch this area. I would kind of move in this area because the, the light is coming, um, you know, in this direction. So you can play with this side um, a little bit more. Okay? 
Now, up in here, we're going to talk about the shadow. Um, I don't... I don't know if I talked about it on the video. I haven't seen it for a while. I, I just, all I do is, um, when I was preparing for this class, I, I kind of ran through it really quick, but I didn't sit and listen to each and everything. Um, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and glaze in this area because this is the shadow, right? Now, if you want, you could take a little bit of... Uh, okay, let's take a little bit of your blue, maybe a purple of some sort, and you can just glaze right on over the stamens, if you like, and give it a little bit of a shadow in there. Um, I'm going to try a little bit of the phthalo blue, and I'm going to find a space in my palette, because it's getting crowded now. And I'm going to find that phthalo blue glaze, okay? Ah! Let's try this. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I'll tip it this way. Okay. That's even better. Okay. See the phthalo blue glaze? And you're going you're gonna to add a lot of water. That's even too dark right there. I'm going to add a little bit more water to my brush. Load up your one stroke. And you're going to come in and glaze it. Do you see that right there? Can you see that? That's uh, just a little bit of the blue glaze. Um, you know, you can go darker and add a little bit of reds to it, but I like that. I like that because it really indicates that there's a shadow there. Okay, um, let's see. Now, why don't you, I'm going to leave you with this for right now, and tomorrow I'll post another, um, another video with some more detail work, and we're going to talk about the white flower, how to paint the white flower. I'm going to show you a little bit more than what's on the video. Um, look at what I just did. I just added some blue there. Now, it's pretty intense, and I'm going to take a wet brush and just kind of, you know, give it a little pass of water across it and spread it out and give it some movement right there, right there, and, and then... You know, you can find where your shadow stops or, you know, you can just, you can make it as big, the shadow as long, gated as you want. If you want to be, you know, really dramatic and have, brush them across the stamens. Because, you know, the shadow's not going to just stop there just because there's a stamen there, right? And then you're going to come on down and pull it around. And there you go. Now, you know, if you want to make it a little bit darker, you can do that as well. Okay, so to recap, let's see, what did we do? We, um, we put a shadow down here, and then once it dries, I'm going to, you know, mine's not dry yet, but you can go back in and increase some of the darker. If, if you feel that the shadow has washed some of, uh, some of the um, folds out and you want to add a little bit more, you can do that. You can do that while it's wet and give it some movement that way. Um, but, you know, I, I bet it might be nice to wait until it's dry because you can, you know, you can get a, more of a handle on, on, you know, where you want the darks at. Um, but these flowers are so funny how dark they can get in certain areas and then as light as they can get. Um, you know, I guess it just depends on how the sun's shining through them. So, there you have it. There you have it, right there. Okay, so you're going to play with it a little bit more. Um, you don't have to... Oh, there's my one eye. Hi. Um, yeah, so play with it a little bit more. And don't be afraid of, of adding, you know, more and more uh, darks. But you've got some really beautiful, beautiful pinks. You have some beautiful yellows. Um, this area right here is so pretty. I just think that's very pretty and up in here. So if you if you if you if you choose not to do the shadow up in here, that's fine too. You know, if you want to just if you love the combo that's happening in this flower, you can do that too. Um, you know, it's not something you have to rush into today or tomorrow. It's just um, it's just some little helpful hints on adding a little more punch. Um, you might not be ready to add that punch until the whole the whole painting is together, okay? Um, next week we're going to be working on 
the background, okay, the, the stems, the white flower, and then I'm going to show you how to do um, the, the blue background that is in the photo of the painting that uh, we posted uh, for the class. Yeah, so we're going to have fun stems and all that great stuff, okay? So take care, paint carefully, have fun, and I'll be posting something again tomorrow. Thanks.